Hey there, we're nearly halfway through the Teaching First D series on close reading. There's a whole playlist so you're going to want to check it out. My name is Rachel Hull and I'm doing this playlist so you can help your younger students learn close reading techniques. I taught elementary school for 22 years. When I first started close reading to my first graders, I was in way over my head. I didn't know how to adapt the strategies, which are based basically for middle school or high school kiddos to my first graders. So if you are looking for ways to adapt close reading methods to your younger students, I've taken everything that I have learned and I put it in a free guide for you right here. And you can get a hold of that. The link is in the description down below in this video. And you can download it for free and get started right away. There's also two weeks of lesson plans to get you started. So um, also it would be helpful if you liked this video, not because I keep track or a vanity score or anything, but it'll more teachers will see it and that way we can help them out as well. Make sure you also subscribe to Teaching Percy's channel because then you'll see all the uh, upcoming close reading tips that I'm coming out within the next couple weeks. Let's talk all about vocabulary for your close reading. I've looked up a few different studies on vocabulary development with younger students and you've probably seen them too. The more your words your students know when they walk into your classroom, the better readers they will be. The more successful readers and writers come from students who have a a very well-developed vocabulary. And vocabulary development is exponential. So that means that children learn double the words each year of their life. So just for round numbers, if they know 100 words, the next year they should know 200 words, the next year they should know 400 words, and it doubles. And that means that if a student walks into your classroom not having that vocabulary development, it's going to be difficult for them to catch up. My very first year of teaching was in 2008. Now back then, again in Stone Ages, I taught vocabulary much different than we do now. Now early in my teaching career, we would tell our students the word, I would write a sentence on the board, I would draw a picture, I would define it for them, and my students would just copy whatever it was that I chose to write on the board. Now clearly things have changed. Clearly. <laughs> Now, can you see how teacher-led that was? That was about my understanding of the words. I already knew the words, but it was my understanding of the words. But that's the way that we were taught. And that's the way our textbooks back then suggested that we teach vocabulary. It's not the best practice now, but one thing I can say is that at least we had the time to teach vocabulary. Right now, it's difficult to find the time to do so. So what do you do if you don't have time to teach vocabulary, especially if your students desperately need it and they've come to you behind? A good way to begin is to make sure you incorporate vocabulary instruction with your close reading. Now, here's the best part about teaching vocabulary and close reading at the same time. The kids are going to love it. They really are. If I was to compare vocabulary, my vocabulary instruction from 1998 to my close reading strategies for now, um, my it would be night and day. It really would be. In 1998, my students were bored. I gave them a list of words to memorize, and it, it was boring. It was not my best teaching moments, and I can admit that because that was 22 years ago, and I've learned and I've grown since then. But when I taught vocabulary during close reading, my kiddos were so excited to learn their new vocabulary words and skills. They were engaged during my lessons and they came away with a lot more meaning than if I just gave them the list and had them memorize it. So here are some examples of what a vocabulary instruction during close reading will look like. The first thing you need to do is make sure you are building hype for your new words. The goal of your vocabulary instruction is more than just teaching your students a definition of one word. You are teaching them to unlock the secrets of these tricky words that they're going to be reading. You want them to be comfortable with new words so they acknowledge they need to figure the words out but it's not intimidating for them. And you want to, that, to show them how to use context clues in the passage to find the meaning of new words and that is your goal. It's kind of like the old adage, you teach a man to fish and he'll fish for, he'll have, you know, eat for a lifetime. You're doing that with vocabulary. Instead of just having them memorize one word, you are teaching them how to unlock every new vocabulary word that they'll encounter. Now, 
Now your standard vocabulary instruction includes writing out the word, drawing a picture, and then using the word in a sentence. And these are still great activities that you can do today as long as they are student-led and not teacher-led. Don't be like me in 1998 where I wrote the word and I chose the sentence and I drew the picture. There are other ways to do that where you are making it so it is about them and they are learning. So let me give you some uh, tips to make your students responsible for writing their words and understanding what they mean. Make sure you annotate first. On the first reading of your uh, reading passage for the week, you should have already identified and circled any tricky words. If you're wanting to annotate with your kiddos, but you're not sure if you want the big mess about it, I do have a video in the playlist on annotating with younger students. You're gonna wanna check that out. But if you annotate and you acknowledge those tricky words, it makes it a little less hard for them. They see that they're, that's a word that they're going to learn. And then on, on the next day, they're going to remember that word and say, okay, this this is the word we're going to figure out this time. Have your students partner up and discuss their words with these kinds of questions because you can stand in front of your students and be as interesting as you can be, but they're still going to learn from each other as well. So ask your students these kind of questions. Have I heard this word before? Does it remind me of another word? Or is there a smaller word inside that I recognize? Can I use this word in a sentence? Or have I used, heard this word in a sentence before? Look at the words around your mystery word. Do these words give you clues for your mystery word? Or can we use this word in our classroom today? When you're helping your students write their words and sentences like we've been talking about, make sure you're going to be doing the bare minimum of modeling based on what they're able to do. At the beginning of the year, you are going to write everything out for them and you are going to draw a picture for them and they will be doing copying, but it is different than, it, than when, the way I did it in 1998. You're going to write the word for them, of course, that's, you know, that that's the word that we decided and you guys chose that together but the sentence should be student-led it should not be your sentence you can already use this word in a sentence I want you to lead your students into using it in a sentence that means something to them if you need to at the beginning of the year you can write their sentence on the board and they will copy it and then as the year progresses they should be able to write their own sentences now the picture is a little bit different too you want to model how to decide what to draw instead of what to draw so and another way of saying that is you want to do some teacher talk about what you're drawing. So if you are doing a um, part of your vocabulary word is on cold-blooded animals, you're going to want to think through out loud what to draw. And that's the process I want you to teach your students. So you can say, well, I learned that lizards have to lay on a rock to have the sun warm them up. And so I definitely need to draw a rock and I definitely need to draw that sun. And of course, I'm going to draw the lizard here. And that's going to help me remember what cold-blooded means, OK? As opposed to like, all right, I'm just going to draw this and you copy it. So that way, teaching them that process of deciding what to draw based on the meaning is going to help them be able to draw their own pictures. Now, I used to have vocabulary notebooks. They were these spiral bound things. Honestly, I think I've said a lot of times the vocabulary time, you know, instruction that I had was really boring, really boring. And, um, you know, I don't want to have that. You know, the, the books were kind of spiral bound. They'd come untwisted or, you know, they get pencil stuck in them. And, um, you know, so my students just really chose to use dry erase boards and markers better. You know, they just, it, it's easy for them. They like using them. And so we just really would do that a lot of times for our words and our pictures and our sentences. So use dry erase boards. It saves on paper and it's, you know, it's very easy to do. Or if you uh, do feel a little extra, you can get them their little uh, notebooks that look like this. And it's kind of like they're a little detective notebook and they can write 
in there too. I don't usually find this is perfect for little kids' hands. And if I give them a giant dry erase board, sometimes it's too much or even a big piece of paper, like in my journal, it was too much space and they felt like they had to come up with the whole thing and they got intimidated. This is perfect, they can write the sentence or the word and draw the picture and do a sentence, you know, and that's just a, the right amount of space for a close reading vocabulary, um, taking notes on that. You wanna make sure you celebrate the new words that they learn. There are a lot of different ways to do this. I like to mix it up and do something different every week, but the, uh, just so it's kinda, of, it doesn't get stale. My two favorite celebrations about close reading vocabulary is a, a vocabulary parade and then vocabulary badges. Now to throw a vocabulary parade, they take their dry erase boards, it's very easy. They write their words on it and you take them around the school and they show their words. But the best part is you're gonna to wanna to send an all staff email to everybody and so they know what you're doing and they see, you know, hey, when you see us coming, can you stop and ask my kiddos about some of their words? And they're so proud, so proud. Um, so that's a really fun way to kind of celebrate their vocabulary. And, you know, you can even do it on the way to lunch and then just collect the words or the, the words, the boards as you go in. And so it's really something that's simple, but they like doing it and it doesn't take a lot of time. Vocabulary badges are super fun too. They also take a minimal time. You can either just use little note cards or like address labels. Um, I had a whole box, I mean, thousands of these things, a set of dot matrix printer labels. And if you don't know, again, I am so old. So old. A dot matrix printer would have these perforation things on the side with holes in them. And then you would have to tear that part off. You'd fold it and tear that part off. And in the printer, it had these gears with like um, spokes on it, like a, the wheel and a tire. And the paper would fit on those spokes and it would turn that way and it would feed the paper through the printer. And there's no, you know, there's no way I can use these labels in a regular printer now, so I would just use them as name tags or anything. Gosh, I'm dating myself. Here's your printer history lesson here. But anyway, I, I would use these labels and my students would write the words on there and they'd stick it on their coats or their, you know, folders or their shirts and, and they would take it home and then I'd send a message home to families and they would know like on Tuesdays their, you know, vocabulary uh, words are coming home. So make sure that, you know, they're proud to show what words they learned. So that's just another way to use resources I already had and they write the words and they're proud to take the, the words home. So it's just like a little celebration for the words that they learned. Now these are all some great ideas for vocabulary, but none of them will be effective if you are not these words biggest cheerleaders. If you are treating them like they're boring and they're tough, then your students are going to think that these words are boring and tough. If you are building hype, these are the coolest things ever. And I can't believe that you guys are learning all these words. I just can't believe it. When you, did you know that you come to first grade or second grade, you know, and learn these words? This is, you know, I never thought that we would get so far. You know, just really build up the hype and then your vocabulary words, you know, and your instruction will be really successful. So I hope that this was helpful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And then I will see you in the next video where we're going to talk about comprehension during your close reading lessons. So I'll see you then.